What I like to say about this series is it's a documentary on steroids. Hostage went from being an idea to reality by kind of starting in our roots at the design studio here at Big Machine. We were trying to come up with ideas that we could use some of our talents and the visual effects and the design that we do to further storytelling. One of our big advantages here at Robot Seal and Post is our relationship with Big Machine Design. Big Machine Design is a visual effects studio. We've been around for just about nine years. We work in the film industry, the television industry, advertising, and the video games. Steve Peterson, who directs our reenactments and is the creative director of our series, is also the creative director of Big Machine Design, a highly accomplished, very recognized leader in the graphics field. It's a really multidisciplinary studio, and all of that is what kind of helps make our look and our storytelling unique. That it's not just TV, it's commercials and video games. And I have a background with investigation discovery. I produced a couple of series for them in the past, one of which was Call 911. The people here at Big Machine Design are terrific people, and we were basically paired up by uh, folks here and at the network as kind of an interesting team to make it all work. Apart from the topic of hostage negotiating and, and hostages having an incredible dramatic line that carries every story through. There's a lot of logistics and a lot of explaining that needs to go on. 90 minutes before Flight 592 touches down, loaded with hostages, all of Kennedy Airport is shut down. No flights in or out. This is eerie. We thought we could use our design and graphics to help enhance the storytelling. That's why you see the extraordinary virtual environments used at the beginning of each act, featuring Dominic Messino. Eight hours into this intense standoff, the plan is, the SWAT team is preparing to fire tear gas into the front of the store, forcing crews out the rear door, where a sniper is ready to take the shot. In the spatial recreations, for example, which are a big component of all the shows, there's one spatial recreation animation in every act, which is our host Dominic walking around basically a virtual environment, explaining something that is almost visually impossible to show on the budget we had without coming up with a, a really cool, unique way to do it. At the Florida Mini Mart, 100 police cars and over 200 officers have the place surrounded. News helicopters are covering it from every angle. Another helicopter is bringing in the killer's girlfriend. We were careful in coming up with the design for the show because we didn't want the design to overshadow the story. We didn't want it to draw your attention away. That's why you see the amazing reenactments and the graphics that supplement those reenactments. We wanted to enhance it and be a great companion to the story that was being told. The look and the colors and everything are subdued so it doesn't just draw a bunch of attention. Because basically everything is kicked up a notch. I mean, the stories are super intense. The visualizations are incredibly dramatic. The editing takes it up another level of drama. And now we bring in the music by a wonderful composer in London, Michael Plowman. That brings it up another notch, and now on the top of it, we add our graphics. And graphics take it yet another level. It's been my goal to try to make this series look as much like a feature film as possible, while staying true to the story, but also keeping it really cinematic. These are all things that are normally not done in a docudrama or a documentary series. We're doing all of them and I think it really helps, and I think it really makes for extraordinary storytelling. To any aspiring directors or producers, I would say do stuff you're really passionate about. Don't do stuff that you think networks want or you think other people want. Do something you really want to do and a story you want to tell.